What if I told you I'm fixing to go bow fishing in the daylight in a regular old bass tracker? Do you think I was crazy? I'm going to have just as much fun as them guys that's got them bow fishing setups with the platforms on their boat and all them stadium lights all the way around that go out at night. If you think you got to have that stuff to have a good time bow fishing, I need to take you to school, show you a thing or two about bow fishing the slew life way. Hang on. Welcome to Bow Fishing 101. I'll be your instructor, Cool Guy Chris. Today I'll be going over the basics of bow fishing. Things you will need, things that will help, and things you need to know. I could easily make this a two hour video, but I'm just too lazy for that. So we're going to keep it simple. If you have any questions, ask in the comments, and I'll answer them there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to go over is what you actually need to go bow fishing. I'd also like to take this time to say you need to check your local laws for the rules and regulations for bow fishing because they vary from state to state. You can't just go out and shoot whatever fish you want. That would be bad. Alright, so what you need to go bow fishing. First and foremost, a bow fishing bow. Any style will do as long as it has a spool to hold the line and that the line is attached to a bow fishing arrow. I personally like a compound bow. You'll need to make sure the bow is adjusted to between 40 to 50 pounds. Too little and the arrow won't go through the fish. Too much and the arrow will go all the way through the fish, which is a huge pain in the butt to deal with. Now the only other thing you need is water with fish that you can shoot with your bow. Carp and gar are the two most popular species to bow fish for. And that's basically it, all you need. Now let's talk about some things that can make your bow fishing experience better. Obviously a boat will help drastically. But you don't have to have a bow fishing rig. I successfully bow fished out of a $100 John boat before. And the only other thing I always make sure I have is a pair of polarized glasses. And these will help you see your fish. They don't have to be expensive, but just make sure they're polarized. And lastly, we need to go over what you need to know. Other than your local rules and regulations, you need to know about refraction. What is refraction? When light travels from air into water, it slows down, causing it to change direction slightly. This change of direction is called refraction. But what does that mean? It means that things in the water aren't where they appear to be. So if you try to aim at a fish in the water directly, you will miss. You have to aim under the fish. A lot of how much lower depends on how deep the fish is or how shallow it is. Two inches below the fish is a good starting point. You'll get the hang of it. And that completes Bow Fishing 101. Now let's hit the water. Now we're bow fishing. You're going to miss a lot. But don't let it discourage you. It's going to happen. You'll get the hang of it. And you'll still miss a lot. Happens to everybody. But you just shot your first fish. It's better to me to go ahead and put your bow down and use your hands to pull the line in instead of using the reel. You may want to wear gloves if you'll be shooting a lot of gar, or you can be like me and just sack up. That's up to you. But gar scales can cut you, and for some reason they don't act like they appreciate being skewered with an arrow. Now to get the fish off your arrow, most fishing arrows have a tip that you can loosen up. This will allow you to flip the barb the other way around and let the arrow come out of the fish. Now put that bad boy in a live well. Gar tastes great. Don't let anybody lie to you and tell you different. Don't forget to flip your bar back and tighten the tip. Now you're a bow fish. 